Hello, welcome to the channel. Today I'm hungry, so I've asked our normal home cooks, Jamie and Barry, to shop local and buy me lunch. Hopefully they can find something delicious, new, exciting, and most of all, that celebrates London's diverse food scene. And they say the fame hasn't gone to his head. There's going to be three rounds. Round number one, story. I want a dish with a talking point. Two, Instagram ability. You are going to vote on which dish you think is most enticing. And three, originality. Hopefully to find a dish that I've never tried or possibly even heard of before. That's a challenge. I'm going straight for a Big Mac. <laughs> I know he's not had one of those before. I'm going to give you some time to research. A £50 budget each. Off you go. Spenny, hundred pounds on a lunch, mate. Look at you. The thing, the thing about it is, is, everyone thinks he knows everything, including himself. Yes. Find something that Evers has never eaten before. He's never eaten everything. I've got one solid idea. The others are sketchy. Instagram category completely depends on what turns up and how it turns oh, up. It's lethal. Let's get started. This first round isn't easy. Jamie, you're up first. Tell us your story. Evers, you love a story. Please, lift the cloche. <laughs> what the? What you have in front of you is Cheva Pachichi. This is considered to be the national dish of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Romania, what? and Serbia. They all share one national dish. Yes, this is an incredibly popular street food item in the Balkans, which is kind of southeast Europe. Fairly recent uh, invention, they reckon around 1860 or so, uh, from Serbia. The guy reformed Serbian hamburgers into the kofta shape and became incredibly successful. People started asking for them all times of the day and night, even for breakfast, is how the story goes. I have no idea how you're supposed to eat it. The fact that it's on a flatbread, part of me just wants to roll yeah. the whole thing up. <laughs> and yet picking around the different bits. Those little kofta things with three different meats. Delicious. Would you say that they're quite moist? They've got a lot of the, the fat, so I think the fattiness of the three different meats comes through. But there's also a really fiery kick from that red sauce, which is slightly different to that red sauce, which is, I think, the aubergine one, right? That'll be the aubergine and paprika. I think the uh, the fiery one will be the extra chilli sauce that I ordered for it. I oh, gotcha. Mm. Yeah, standard, Jamie, move. It plays to all the senses. I like it. And just so you know the pedigree of this dish, uh, this was produced by The Hungry Tummy. Sounds place, authentic. Place in London that specialises in Eastern European cuisine. I thought that would be perfect for you. In your face, your turn, what's your story? Interesting approach. I love it. I love a national dish. I'd not heard of that one. It's super tasty. I learnt a lot. Ben, please lift your cloche. Dish number two. There you go, that's the, that's the reaction I was looking Whoa. for. In front of you, you have a starter, a main, and a side of focaccia. Open them up and tell us what you find. You know I'm a fan of things on sticks, but I'm also a fan of things in jars. Interesting. So these jars are from Godo, founded in London, They're on a mission to offer you the best Italian gastronomy wherever you are. Think of it as a celebration of Italian excellence. So first off, you've got a wild boar brazola, and secondly, you have a vitolo tonato. They all come cold, and um, because this is a takeaway only restaurant, um, and it's all pre-made in the jars every day. So it's almost like a coleslaw at the bottom of that. You've got in coleslaw and cold meat. Exactly. Good. good. I yeah. mean, it's for with some, with some bread. I mean, this is yeah. basically like picnic ready to go. But as a packed lunch, suddenly this becomes super interesting. Now, please dig into the main because this was completely new to me. It's veal on a tuna mayo. <laughs> Essentially, and I, 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 are you aware of this? Mm. I've only had it at Angelina's, the restaurant in Dalston that fuses Italian and Japanese food. It's then topped with apple and sultanas sort of to get a bit more sweetness as well. And the veal is served deliciously pink. So as you can tell, when it comes to Italian food, this is fine-ish dining in a jar, which is somewhat unusual. And again, the reason this jumped out to me was these jars. Um, there was so much plastic when ordering uh, takeaways. 
These jars are obviously reusable. Keep them for yourself, use them for other things. Um, but actually, once you've got 20 of them, you can then return them and get a discount off your next order. So what's the story? The story is the jars. That was the story. I introduced it as a talking point. I said, a, a, a talk cat, a cat uh, is a story. Oh, Someone sorry. And that's the end of the story. <laughs> that help? <laughs> I feel like that in itself is a brand new story to me. It's a place that I've never been. It's a national dish I've never tried. It's absolutely delicious. This one, the food is delicious, again. But it's so unique because it's in the jars that it takes it to a completely different comparison. Both great stories. The one that captivated me more is the salad jars. Because they're delicious and unique, I need to order it several more times so I've got enough jars to return them. Time to claw it back. Ebbers, open it up. Instagram ability. Ooh. Ebbers, what we have here is a baklava ice cream sandwich. I've got you your favourite pistachio gelato, Biscoff baklava and pistachio baklava and some vanilla gelato as well. Wow. I also like the fact that if, you, if, you, if you're pronouncing baklava wrong, you've said it back, wrong about five times. Baklava. Well, it's also, it's made by the baklava company. So let's hope. You've been saying baklava until I said baklava. Oh no, you're kidding. Baklava. <laughs> it's baklava. <laughs> so we should stress that this round isn't up to me to vote. You are currently voting on which one your favourite is, the one that you would entice you to eat the most. But in the meantime, we're going to look at them, taste them. Ben's going to decide what he would have picked. It's irrelevant. You're in charge. Flavours wise, I'm excited. Both crispy and chewy, all in one. So this is from the Baklava Company. They've been uh, layering there since 2016, and people have been loving their baklava, either from the store or getting them delivered. These have all the textures that you love of baklava, but then they've been hit around the head with loads of really new, quirky flavours. And by new, I mean kind of trending flavours. Biscoff. I would almost like to say that's almost Oreo. I don't know if it is. With a drizzle of mm. chocolate. Basic. It's the Instagram round. I know, and you've gone Biscoff and Oreo. Let's see if it pays off. It looks filth. As you can imagine, their photography has sent these crazy on Instagram. We will wait to find out whether my photography has the same effect. A great choice, because it's not something I eat very often. And every time I have back of it, I always go, why don't I eat this more often? And then this, there's a real indulgent twist on that that makes it arguably a bit more accessible to people who don't know what baklava is. This might entice them in to try that and the classic flavours. The gelato, also delicious. I'm nervous now. Ebers, lift the cloche. Ooh. Now, I have simultaneously taken a risk by playing it safe. These are from Lodori which is a very well-established French patisserie. I went with them because I know they make the prettiest macarons around. And I got the most flamboyant thing on their menu. Soft macaron with fresh berries and an icing inside. Classic, punchy in visuals. And I was thinking the colour, the elegance would get me the views. While this is kind of all the shades of golden beige and brown, this is striking. But it also, I hear you, perhaps a little obvious. It is obvious, but sometimes give the people what they want. Texture-wise, perfect for a macaron. Lovely. <laughs> Both photos were uploaded to Instagram without any reference to whose was whose, or even what the challenge was. The only question was, which is the most enticing? It has been live for a period of time. Well, Evans, why don't we get your opinion on who you would give the point to, and then we'll find out the real winner. Sat here with these in front of me, I know which one catches my eye initially, and that is the brighter colour, but I also know which one kind of entices me in with curiosity and the one that I would be enticed to go back for more of. 
Shall we have a look at the results? I'm no, I'm really nervous. <laughs> I get this, I'll take the win. With 65% of the votes. Oh! Oh! So pretty much two thirds. Not quite a landslide, but. You guys have said that the most enticing dish is. <laughs> Dainies. <laughs> the baklava wins it. And most of the comments were saying, too obvious. Whereas, people saying, that looks really cool and I absolutely want to try it. Barry, how many times has one of my photos been That wasn't yours? a photography challenge. Well, how many times? That was enticing one of my food. I, I took a risk, it of yours went wrong. In a challenge. One point each, which means it's all still to play for as we dive into the unknown. Speaking of the unknown, Evers, please lift my cloche. Your cloche? My cloche. Also, this is like... That didn't fit under the cloche. <laughs> Whoa. What is that? I don't know. Evers, for our originality round, I would like to take you to Nigeria. I've never been. And I would like to serve you Og Bono soup, otherwise known as draw soup, which is served with pounded yam. Wow. So I have no idea what this dish is what these various bouncy parts are, or what gives it that consistency. So it's known as draw soup because of the viscosity of it. It sits somewhere in between a soup and a stew. Yeah. It's made with ogbono seeds. It's like wild mango seeds. Yeah. And the meat I have chosen for you is mixed meat. It is the most unique consistency yeah. I have ever seen. It's almost stringy like cheese, but part gelatinous bone marrowy. It's like slime. Possibly mucus like. <laughs> I don't know, I can't get, I don't know how to get it enough on the spoon to be able to try it. Cheers. <laughs> Spicy. <laughs> That's a grower. You know when you order for takeaway menu, it sometimes gives you a guidance of how many chilies <laughs> next to it? <laughs> Which one did this have? <laughs> a lot of Nigerian soups and stews are served with something called a swallow. Um, and that is the solid part uh, of uh, the meal. I went for the pounded yams. This is a white yam. Uh, the brown skin of the raw yam is sliced off with a knife. The white inner part is boiled until soft. It's then pounded until it's smooth with a dough-like consistency. <laughs> texture is unlike anything I've ever eaten before. And I'm not great with the gelatinous textures, but hey. It's a very traditional dish that every family and every tribe have a different recipe for mm. making it, whether they prefer to have vegetables in it or not. And for that reason, I absolutely love it. What amazes me about this is that all of these foods are available on our doorstep. It's the very reason I love to travel the world is to try new dishes. The fact that you don't need to leave home and you can have dishes like this brought to you. So that's from a restaurant called Enish Africa. Uh, they're on Old Kent Road. Um, they do tons of Nigerian recipes as well as dishes from all over Africa. It's fiery, but more than just the spice, it is so unlike anything we've ever had before. And for that reason, I'm a big fan. Very strong start. You've done it again. Oh, my turn, Evers. Wipe the sweat from under my eyes. And please, lift the cloche. Ooh. These are Will Cakes from Will Cake Island, uh, who are based just in Spitalfields. Their aim was to recreate their Taiwanese childhood favourite market stall treat and bring it to London. So Will Cakes are soft, moist, fluffy Taiwanese pancakes with creamy fillings in a variety of flavours. We've got a bean paste there, we've got a chocolate and vanilla, and you've got a cheese version as well. Sweet, but not sickly sweet. I remember having similar in Hiroshima. The tricky thing with Ebers here is he's done a lot of travelling. He's done a he's lot. He's not been to Nigeria and he's not been to Taiwan. 
So we're playing it all the safe. All the Balkans, different round. Yum. I mean, I'm still going because they're all different. And in the spirit of originality and intriguing me, I am super intrigued oh, this is, this is by the different fillings. Chocolate and custard, this one? That's the red bean. Oh, red bean. Red bean paste is one of those that, on your first taste, you're like, oh, do I like that? And then yeah. on your second taste, you realise, I do like it. And then you can't stop. And then you can't stop, no. For me, the texture of this one with the custard, yummy. The flavour of the matcha, phenomenal. And the red bean paste, I kind of have always liked. But in an originality round, we have had steamed doughs before, as steamed breads. And we have had kind of pancakes cooked in a similar vein, but I've never had anything like that. And although it wasn't my favorite thing I've eaten today, under the category of originality, I love that we got to try it. So my winner for the originality round is Nigerian stew and pounded yam. Well played, well I'm played. Such an experience. You've got a great technique in these games. I, I, I've got a lot of winning. Yeah. No, no! Yeah. What? Providing you didn't overspend on your £50 budget, Jamie will take the win two to one. Baz, what did you spend? £45.50. Not including delivery. And Jay? £49.51. Oh, oh, you spent well too. 50 well, quid for lunch. <laughs> 100, 100 quid, quid for lunch. lunch. You happy? Told you I was hungry, but granted, £100, maybe a little spenny for lunch. But as always, all the food will be shared with the rest of the team as soon as the camera stops rolling. But for now, it's over to you in the comments. Like me and Ben, do you agree that I had the best dishes? Comment down below, let us know, have you tried any of these? Which ones intrigued you the most? Right, I'm in the seat next, that's it. My turn to have 100 quid spent on me. We could also have ordered a fufu, but I decided not to. That's um, cassava, um, or cassava, depending on how you want to pronounce so, it. That's what my wife calls her, never mind. I went, the, <laughs> I went for the pound of jams. Also something you... No. Nope. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well played, well played, sir. I, I, I just fell into my lap. That was great.